We're good. We're good. Hello. Welcome to Honey Do Me. Hello. Welcome. I'm Emma. I'm Cass. This and is our we... podcast. <laughs> this is a podcast where we talk about sex and relationships and confidence and shame and uh, working through it all. Yeah. It's a lot less heavy than it sounds. It's actually very fun. Oh, we we're so good fun. Time. We're like that sound, uh, that TikTok sound where it's actually, I'm actually very fun and laid back. <laughs> That's how I feel constantly. I feel like yeah. I'm aggressively reminding people how fun and laid back I am. Yeah, I am so fucking chill, uh, which I'm... that's going to come into play next week. So yes. <laughs> you'll hear more about what chill girls we are um, in next chill, week's chill, episode. Chill, 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 chill. Ice cold, you know? Uh, I'm just... A cucumber is what I'm often <laughs> compared to. People don't need spa water. They need cast water. Maybe because I'm such a cuke. Mm-hmm. Oh, that feels like a slur. <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it is for the chill girl. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah. But today we're not going to talk about a chill girl. Mm-mm. We're talking kind of <laughs> the opposite, <laughs> stereotypically, of what yeah. a chill girl is. It's someone who, you know, needs to drop back into their body and needs to, I don't know, center themselves so they can actually experience the pleasure that is coming in. <laughs> The pleasure betwixt your legs. We are talking about how to stay present during Mm -hmm. sex because that is something we have both struggled with. We know that's something that you all have expressed that you struggle with, whether it's trauma, sexual trauma, just general like worry, anxiety, whatever it is that's keeping out of your body. We wanted to figure out how to work through all of that. And Mm -hmm. you know who we need to talk to to do all of that. There's no one else. It's fucking Victoria Albina. Like, there's no one else. So, Mm -mm. she is always our words of wisdom when it comes to nervous system regulation, Mm -hmm. which this is. And I know that sounds sciencey, but it's so cool. And I love Mm -hmm. the way that she talks about it. Um, And yeah, she has all the fucking tips, tricks. She walks you through a couple of examples of how to drop into your body, which Cass and I do. And it Mm -hmm. is, I mean, it's just meditative when you listen to her voice. This episode is a warm hug. Mm -hmm. And we all need that. But a warm hug that then will lead to better orgasms, which is like (laughs) the only kind of hug I'm interested in. (laughs) Correct. A sexual hug, if you will. Mm -hmm. A tantalizing hug. A tantalizing. (laughs) Tentacolizing. (laughs) Sounds like if Squidward were to hug you. Well, (laughs) it's tentacle porn. (laughs) (laughs) Don't yuck my yum. (laughs) Don't yuck it. I've never actually watched it. So. Porn? tentacle porn is that a real thing yeah that is i thought you just made that up no it, it's like i don't think it's like live octopi it's like <laughs> um i think it's like anime oh okay i've never watched anime porn as either it as well why did i feel like you had i don't know <laughs> because <laughs> oh, because now there I was <laughs> This is so off camera of you to bring up. I genuinely was like, it must not have been her. So off camera of you. Um, because there was there there's been some interesting scenes in movies that have animated things that like I'm the like, Lion King? Not like the Lion King, you pervert. (laughs) Like, I appreciated how in Avatar their tails would connect. I was like, that's curious. (laughs) I'm wondering. That's curious. I'm I'm thinking about that. Uh, I appreciated the cinematography in one movie. uh, I think it was called Manic or as a show. (laughs) I mean, you just, you'd have to watch it. I'm not going to, I digress. You're a cinephile. (laughs) Isn't that what that's called? (laughs) There's been just some moments where I've dabbled, but I've never sought out anime porn <clears throat> yet. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's what we were waiting for, the yet. Maybe we can do um, a reaction video on YouTube. We'll, we won't show the anime porn. We've gotten stuff taken down before, and we know yeah. we've learned our lesson. Mm. Um, we've gotten our anime <laughs> porn <laughs> taken down. Our homemade anime porn has been removed. <laughs> Just cutouts that we like, <laughs> make, bang. Well, you know, you do what you can with what yeah. you have. Yeah. Uh, crafty Graphic cunts designers is what they call us. <laughs> what did you say? 
<laughs> they call us crafty cunts. Crafty cunts. I thought you were saying graphic cunts, like oh. uh, our graphic design business. That's be what funny. it would be called. That's what graphic it would be cunts. called. I love that. TM. That is actually perfect. We TM'd that. Yeah. In this moment, it. we've already talked to our lawyers. That's ours. So mm-hmm. you can't. Graphic yeah. By cunts. the time that you're hearing this, it's mm-hmm. it's TM'd. It's far, far down the line in legal. Um, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so don't even think about it. Oh, my God. Uh, so graphic cunts, we are not. <laughs> But, but we can try to do a reaction video. <laughs> but I'd be interested to see other people's graphic cunts. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be curious to see others. I'd be very interested. <laughs> How would you feel if during sex somebody used the word cunt instead of like pussy? Mm, I wouldn't like that in reference to my bits. Mm-hmm. I think I could come around to the idea in dirty talk of being called that. Okay. I don't know but, if I'd like it, but I think I would come around to that idea more than I would come around <laughs> to that idea more than it referring to my vulva and vagina. Yeah, that's fair. What about I you? read it in a book the other day and they were calling somebody's uh, vulva a cunt and it like took me by surprise. I was like, <laughs> oh, it gives me pause when I read it. <laughs> it gave me pause. I mean, I kept reading. It was fantastic. Of course. But, um, Interesting. Yeah. How did they, do you remember the sentence of like, give me your cunt? Can I Something your about cunt? a pretty little cunt. <laughs> like, I think huh. about your pretty little cunt. <laughs> okay, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> that was more interesting than I was expecting. <laughs> was it curious? <laughs> it was curious. It was curious. Oh, it was curious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna draw about that later. <laughs> I'm gonna draw that out. I'm gonna sketch that out in my graphic cunt sketchbook. <laughs> I'm in stage one of learning graphic design. It's just sketching. <laughs> it's just little sketches. Whenever they come to me, whenever I find something curious, I sketch it out. <laughs> one day I'll get into the computer. <laughs> yeah, not that today is not that day. Today is not that day. Mm-mm. Oh my god, that's so funny. <sighs> uh, we digress. <laughs> Let's softball this one over to Victoria now. Yeah, this one's to you, V. Um, <laughs> v. V for victory. V yeah. for Victoria. We'll see on the other side of this one. <laughs> god. Ah, okay, bye. Bye. So yeah. we've talked about how codependence can keep you from being really present during sex yes. something. I struggle with and we want to get a little deeper into that. So I really struggle with being present when I'm having sex. I'll get distracted, overwhelmed, triggered by certain things, think about shitty past experiences. And I don't want to do this anymore. And I think a lot, I'm not going to say hope because I don't hope this for other people, but I think that Mm. a lot of other people experience the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I would love to start out uh, with what gets in the way of us being present during sex. Mm. Okay. Over to you. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I thought, I thought you were laying out where we were going. Okay, great. So I was like, yeah, what else? Okay, great. <laughs> we'll just start there. Yeah. We'll start with that. Okay, great. I was so present and mindful. I didn't realize yes. you're asking me a question. So what gets in the way of our being mindful? I mean, I think you named it, right? Um past stress, distress, and trauma, uh, and we can talk about the science of, of why that brings brings us out of the moment. It does it for really beautiful, self-loving reasons, and the result is often a bummer. Um, yeah, overwhelm in our nervous system, having a limitation in our window of capacity in our nervous system to stay present, to stay regulated in our nervous system. Uh, inner children can come out to play, and things like overwhelm, not um, knowing how to manage our adult minds, which is not a skill any of us are taught until we like actively go seek out coaches like us, right, to to support us and guide us and, and teach us how to manage our minds and manage our thinking. Um, and living in a society that is go, 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 where productivity is it, right? Productivity 
creating stuff, creating content, creating the next thing. Like that is what is prioritized. And so the act of mindfulness, the uh, praxis of mindfulness, right? The lived practice of being present is, is not what we prioritize. It's not what we're taught to. Yeah. It's just not what matters, right? Culturally, it's getting that memo in by five, or if it's due at five, it's getting it in by one, right? Mm -hmm. Even if it means you haven't eaten lunch for a week. Um, Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think we can start there with, with naming systems and um, our, our own past history, right? Mm -hmm. I know that productivity really gets in the way of like me masturbating as well. I think I will start thinking about every checklist that I could ever create for myself, my loved ones, my friends. <laughs> and that gets in the way of me just taking, literally I could let that go and be done quicker if I would just focus and stay in the moment. But the fact that I bring it up, I'm like constantly distracted and then I get yeah. anxiety and then that's a weird orgasm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, right. it does or, result in a weird orgasm. Yeah. I'm just like, well, I yeah. feel shameful. Yeah. <laughs> that was, I feel guilty about that one. Aww. Well, it's, it, yeah, it's a weird right, one. We like, it's like supposed to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like we yeah, were talking to what Luna. Weird? We were talking to Luna about this uh, the other day as well. And it's like forcing out an orgasm, like to get it done. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I feel like that it was just, it felt like a weird, I made this one happen. All right. Anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, it's like oddly transactional mm-hmm. with our own bodies. Yep. Right. So, you know, the work I do as the coach is all about somatics or our bodily experience of life coming back to the body. I bring in some internal family systems work. Um, it's the work of Dick Schwartz. And Susan McConnell does a lot of somatic IFS work. And she says that the point and practice of somatics is the shift from I have a body to I am my body, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so it's really in that transactional sort of late stage capitalist driven, like, all right, let's bang out this orgasm because I'm stressed and it's a stress reliever. And like, all right, body, I'm going to give you X inputs. Give me Y orgasm, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. That is like, yeah. And it's, it's, and it's way kind of dehumanizing, right? Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. And brings us out of our wholeness. Right. Yeah, it definitely right. starts to feel icky mm-hmm. at that yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you're using yourself. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. Right. Which is like my favorite, like one of my favorite <laughs> jokes I'll make. Like, oh, girl, the other night, I uh, let me tell you what, I sure took advantage of myself. <laughs> 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 Which that feels slutty and fun, but then right? sometimes no, it feels totally like. Fun, yeah. But it's very different than like. I'm stressed. I don't know how to manage stress. Right. Right. I was never given the tools to stay with, be present with, befriend stress, distress, or trauma. And so, like, Mm -hmm. hang out this this flood of endorphins. Right. Yeah. And is it because pleasure has been taught to us as, like, so secondary of a need? Like, you don't need to prioritize, you know, pleasuring yourself, that when – you're starting to actually feel good. Stress hits you so much harder, I feel like, or it gets you get so much more distracted because that's how it feels like in sex or masturbation where I'm like, oh, I'm finally starting to feel good and let loose, but it's like, and here's everything you should worry about. Yeah, so I think it can be so many things, right? Like mm-hmm. what you just said and uh, folks who come from, for example, a religious culture in which pleasure is shameful, right? Sex is for procreation, happens between a married man and a, and his wife and it is to make babies right and that is that so anything outside of that is shame guilt blah mm-hmm. right when bodies are shameful sex is shameful pleasure is shameful um that feels like it is is bedfellows with uh the don't be a selfish woman because remember there's nothing worse than a woman who knows herself or has a concept of self in the patriarchy and so selfish women that's very bad don't be a <laughs> selfish woman and a woman experiencing pleasure well that's an easy one right mm-hmm. that is very wrong and bad and so i think that can be part of it and then for folks who don't consciously carry that narrative remember 
just because it's not your conscious narrative doesn't mean that you you're not steeped in it anyway right Mm -hmm. one two nervous system so we've talked about this before so i'll give a quick primer on the window of tolerance so the window of tolerance in the nervous system is how many inputs your nervous system can take before it and i'll just i'll put this in specific scientific terms freaks the fuck out (laughs) was that too jargony Mm -hmm. did you was that okay We'll try to work it down. On. Yeah, yeah, for our listeners. <laughs> but. You two are the best. Thank you. <laughs> Thank We're really you. smart. Wow. Like, Wicca is smart, though. Mm-hmm. Um, so the window of tolerance, right? So how much bullshit until you what flip your lid? And you go from ventral vagal, the safe and social, totally chill, everything's cool. I'm here, I'm present, I'm in the room, but like fully in the room, in my body, in the room, part of the nervous system, to sympathetic activation, fight or flight, ruled by adrenaline, cortisol, blah, panic, worry, to-do list. I have to, I have to, I have to is the story of sympathetic or dorsal shutdown. I, I can't, I can't, I, 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 I can't. Mm-hmm. I'm frozen, I'm disconnected, I'm not present, I'm not here, I'm in... <sighs> Worry, mm-hmm. which is different from worry, mm-hmm. horseless worry. Mm-hmm. And both of those states, I'm not out here saying that there's a study that shows that your clit's turned off, but like logic would say, uh-huh. yeah, it's turned <laughs> off, uh-huh. right? Mm-hmm. We understand that when you're not in ventral vagal, your digestion's turned off, right? You're not processing a cheeseburger. So why would your clit be on? Like that mm-hmm. doesn't make science, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> Right. And so the window of tolerance is how many inputs we can take and stay in ventral vagal, safe and social part of the nervous system. Clit is on. Mm -hmm. And so I do not like that term because I'm not out here trying to teach anyone, particularly human socializes women to tolerate anything else. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. But I do like the term the window of bodily dignity. How many inputs can come into the system and do we stay in our embodied dignity? Does that vary from person to person and like, is and, it affected and by minute trauma? To minute. Okay. Yeah, mm. very much. Very, very, very much. And like the twin studies, right? So trauma is not what happened. It's how your nervous system reacted to it. Right. So they look at guys who are in the same foxhole in World War II. One will have quote unquote, well, let's just call it what we know it to be PTSD. And the other one does not have shell shock. Like homeboy's fine. They're in the same fox, foxhole, right? Um, they'll take twins and who've been through this literal same family of origin, household, up, growing, up, growing? <laughs> up English, growing, English enough, <laughs> English enough. Thank you. Um, yes, I, English is my second language. I do generally handle it pretty well, except for when I don't. Um, so uh, they'll have the same up growing and one's fine and one has PTSD from that experience. Mm-hmm. So our window of tolerance is incredible incredibly individual what's nature what's nurture what's epigenetics what's the magical mystery of constitution and like souls and spirits it's a it's a big hot mess that you know is a perfect what it is and so um and our window of tolerance our window of capacity to manage life our window of bodily dignity to stay present with ourselves is something that we can shift and we can grow and so our capacity to stay present during anything during ordering a coffee, during a board meeting, during a podcast, during sex, is dependent upon how many inputs we can take and stay with ourselves, stay present. And so that is something that it can change. So when we talk about regulating the nervous system, it means consciously, actively working with how much gas and break we're giving to the body. Where gas is adrenaline, break is acetylcholine, right? We're either revving up to meet life or slowing down to meet life. We're either revving up to escape life or slowing down, hitting the brakes hard to escape life when there's stress, distress, and trauma. Does that English so far? Mm-hmm. Yeah? You with yeah. me? We're good? We're here. So yeah. Yeah. you're having sex and all of a sudden it's too much pleasure. Where you were taught that pleasure is not something for girls and women. It's not for you, right? It's, it's shameful. It's bad. It's selfish. It's wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. Or you just learned, for example, that the other shoe is going to drop. I hear this all the time because the focus of my work is supporting women, human socializes women to overcome codependent perfectionist and people pleasing thinking. And so from a codependent framework, 
the shoe's always going to drop because you're not worthy of love. You're not worthy of care. You're not worthy of safety, right? Everyone else is. So you need them to validate you. Mm-hmm. So if you have good things, your brain says, this isn't going to last. Come on now. Mm-hmm. Don't trust it, mm-hmm. right? Usually because there was damn good reason in childhood to not trust, right? Mm-hmm. So we learn to not trust as a really smart survival skill, and I'm not mad at it, but it sure is holding us back. Mm-hmm. So our nervous is that system, something? Yeah, sorry. go ahead. Is that something that we like necessarily consciously understand or could it just nope. be something that like, okay, our body understands or. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize that I had a block against receiving, like fully receiving love and care. Mm-hmm. That that freaked my nervous system out. Freaked it out. Would totally leave the room. What I would do is go clean. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> So like a relationship would feel amazing. Things would feel really good. And like we'd wake up in the morning and instead of like staying in that cocoon energy of love, which is what I do now, I'd be like, hi, good morning. Oh, I'm up. I'm out. I'm cleaning the house. I'm getting breakfast ready. I'm doing 27 things. I'm like, bow, 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 to not be present. Right. Because my nervous system yeah. was like, you don't get to feel this good. This is going to go to shit. Do not fucking trust it. Right. Because I had a lot of insecure attachment in childhood, a lot of anxious attachment. I had a caregiver who I loved very much, who was like, you have my attention. You have my attention. Gone. It's gone. I'm I'm out. I'm out. Right. So it was created a lot of insecurity. Mm -hmm. Can I trust having love and care and attention or will it be ripped out from under me, which is how it felt as a child? Mm -hmm. So I couldn't trust being happy and feeling pleasure. Yeah, baby. Right. I don't know if it's the same I mean, obviously we're different humans, but I do the exact same thing. Like when I had a partner every morning, I was the first out of bed. I was up cleaning, doing yep. something productive. Yep. And they huh. would just be like, hey, do you wanna- lay down. It's yeah. Saturday. We have nothing yeah. to do. And I'm like, no, yep. it's really important that we are doing everything but laying down right now. Well, yeah, someone has to alphabetize the socks. I know. That's exactly how it felt. Oh, yeah. It's like all I have to do is go pick up fuzz off of the floor that my dog left. But like that is so much more important than laying down and like being loved right now. That's well, crazy. You're not you're not a fool, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm not ridiculous. <laughs> it needs to be let done. Yourself be loved. What could happen? Terrible yeah. things. Terrible such things. as you could be loved. Mm-hmm. Which means you could have loss. Right. You could be rejected. You could be abandoned. And so the nervous system says, you know, what's safer than that risk? I am a rock. I am an island. And I'm not going to truly be vulnerable, open, present to, with or for anyone else. Then these motherfuckers won't hurt me. Mm -hmm. Uh Cool. 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 Winning. Yeah. (laughs) Doing I mean, ahead of everyone else. I mean, nervous system does actually believe it's winning. Let us mm-hmm. be very clear. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It is falling in love is dumb. <laughs> it's the greatest <laughs> gift you can give yourself in the world. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's risky as fuck. It's super risky. Yeah. But I mean, what's that Anais Nin quote? And the day came when the risk to remain tight in the bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. We're there. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, your brain and your body are like, <laughs> you want to be present during sex. <laughs> that is really <laughs> cute. <laughs> oh, you do not know every detail about the sinking of the Lusitania. And yeah. <laughs> also, have you cleaned the dishwasher filter? Did you know the dishwasher had a filter? I don't think you did. I think you need to Google that. I think you need to go on this old house and watch a couple of videos about it. You need to have a little moment with Bob Vila. Who doesn't? <laughs> and then go clean that shit with an old toothbrush. Do you have an old toothbrush? Should you go get a new toothbrush and retire your old toothbrush? <laughs> right? Someone's yeah. going down on you this whole time. Let's yeah. be very clear. <laughs> right? Yeah. But here yeah. you are with Bob Vila and your toothbrush. 
<laughs> oh my god so that is like such an accurate train of thought for me yet right? Yet. With these questions, I was like, I don't, I feel like I stay pretty present. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're like, I don't think this applies to me. Um, I just do what everyone else does. I sure. think about, I think about yeah. Bob. The dishwasher I mean, filter. Come oh. on. Bob feels not, not hot. <laughs> I mean, I'm straight for Clooney way more than Bob Vila. Let me tell you what, but. Oh, that's so oh, funny. That but if I'm going to avoid presents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bob Vila is going to do the trick. Uh, so I think so. a lot of people are probably in the position of, well, this doesn't apply to me. Like, sure. I don't necessarily get up and clean. Or I asked me, if you would have asked me two weeks ago, I would have said, no, I don't have trust issues. Um, I <laughs> have no fear of abandonment whatsoever. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Through much therapy. I am learning mm. that is uh, not the case. Not the case. Um, but how do we recognize this if we're not like, oh, you know, I see it. I'm going and cleaning instead of focusing on this person going down on me. Are there other ways to like pick up on it? Is there a feeling that we can look for? How do we know that we are avoiding the love and the care? I mean, it's so in... I'm, 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 I'm thinking, I'm asking my brain, but maybe that's the problem. You ask my body. So in meditation, the work is, the, no, it's not work. The practice is to be our own witness. Mindfulness, right? Mindfulness. Are you minding your mind? Right. Or do you know where your mind is going? Right. It's, it's 10 o'clock. Do you know where your mind is? Right. Like, where is your mind at any point? And that's why we meditate, right? So that we can step out of our habitual experience of life and into an intentional presence. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And it's through mindfulness, because meditation isn't for everyone, right? Like it's not, it's not a safe or smart practice for everyone, particularly if your body was the site of trauma. It may, it may not be smart to go inside until you are more stabilized in that trauma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then mindfulness is for you if meditation is not. And so mindfulness is about asking, are my mind and body in the same place? Where is my mind going? Is the location, the, the, the place my brain is going in support of my best wellness? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And am I in presence? Am I embodied in presence? So how do you know if you are there or not? Where's your brain right now? Are you half listening to the show while like doom scrolling, while Netflix is on, while drinking a glass of wine, while maybe also giving a blowjob? <laughs> like where are you? Mm -hmm. Right? And so that's, that's a beautiful, simple starting question. Where am I? Where is my presence? Where is my consciousness? Where is my mind? And in the Shambhala tradition, the invitation is simply to, to label what is. Thinking. When you catch, you catch, no. When you come into conscious awareness of, right, because there's nothing negative about it, catch is like, ooh, I got it. My brain was <laughs> being bad. Mm. Oh, your brain is braining. That's its job. Mm. But coming into awareness, present moment awareness, oh, I, I'm having sex and my brain is, is with Bob. My brain is in the laundry machine and the dishwasher. My brain is not here. Mm -hmm. Or even like my brain is on. My brain is, there is a narration versus an experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that one hits. That the narr narration. The narration. It hurts a little bit. <laughs> what is that? Why? <clears throat> Why do we feel the need to narrate our life? Does it, I'm, I guess when I think about it, it helps me somehow, but I don't know why narrating feels better than thinking and being present. Mm. Wait, so narrating doesn't feel like thinking? Tell me more. No, to me, when I'm narrating, yeah, it almost removes me ah. from being like present and yeah. therefore disassociates 
you know, either stress or chaos. It makes me feel more like, oh, the movie of my life. And isn't this funny? Isn't that one silly? Like, oh, that's a sad moment, but she's going to pass it. You know, it's that's kind of how narrating feels. Yeah. So then if you pause and ask your body why it wants to do this for you, listen to mama's words very carefully. Why does it want to do this for you? What do you hear from your body? I guess it just feels like it would be too much to just experience rather than talk about it to myself. So so that's your window of capacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Mm -hmm. your nervous system's capacity to be in presence. There's nothing wrong. There's no problem here. Mm -hmm. There's just more information for you. Mm. And if you want to shift that experience, that's what somatics, what embodiment practices, uh, that's what mindfulness offers. Mm -hmm. And pairing all of that, all of the body-based work, nervous system-based work with thought work, because our mindset matters too. So that that narrator can take a momentary break, right? Because we mm-hmm. we move slowly in the somatic work. We invite the narrator to take twelve seconds off per hour mm-hmm. to allow us to come to the body for one breath, and then she can start narrating again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we rock with that out until that feels safe, and then we extend it to thirty seconds an hour. You see what we're doing? Mm-hmm. It's called titration. Slowly building the new skill. We're here. Being present with yourself is a skill. Mm-hmm. Like it is a legitimate skill that most of us didn't learn in childhood or learned the opposite of mm-hmm. and get to create a new practice around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Did you, do you have like a narrating? Yeah. Um, I think it feels slightly different to me. Mm -hmm. I think I, I started narrating as a way to get out of my body. Sure. Because it didn't feel super safe anymore. Yeah. Um, And so narration just gives me that space between real life. So it's like, I don't actually have to feel it Mm -hmm. and deal with it and be there because it is far too scary to actually be in it. So Mm -hmm. I think it just gives me that distance that tells me I'm safe. Right. But (laughs) Right. So let's talk about the difference between buffering and conscious distraction. Mm -hmm. Uh Mm -hmm. So buffering is the aforementioned doom scrolling with Netflix, with like all the bullshit that pulls us out of presence Mm -hmm. habitually, unintentionally, as a way to avoid a feeling from, I don't know how to feel my feelings. I don't know how to be in my body. It's scary. To... Right? That is that energy, right? That sympathetic. I have to get out of here. Or dorsal, like, oh, I can't. I... So from whatever capacity for ventral vagal we have, we can recognize like, oh, this is, this is going to overwhelm me. Or like 27 things have happened this week that have been really stressful. I want to give myself a break right now. And so I'm going to turn on Netflix, right? I'm going to watch whatever I'm going to, I'm going to do a thing as a gift to myself as a conscious distraction because a nervous system fucking can't Mm -hmm. right? Like all day long, every day in neuroception, in interoception, feeling all your feels, Oh my God, you will explode and die. (laughs) Like that's not a human's <laughs> job, right? We're we're not built to be consciously, constantly, ever presently present, mm-hmm. right? Like we need to chill out. Yeah. We need breaks. That's how our neurochemistry can reset, right? We need entertainment. So allowing it to be a conscious decision of like, you know what would be really just soothing for my nervous system right now is to like, set a timer and let myself narrate the next hour. Like I'm, you know, like it's Jane the Virgin or whatever. And I'm like narrating (laughs) a TV show and that's going to be fun. 
That's going to be a nice break. But you allow it to be conscious. You choose it. Right? And that's what, that's agency. That's choicefulness. That's embodiment. Is choosing to not be embodied for an hour because, oh my fucking God, I don't, no, not available. Mm-hmm. Right? But when we start doing that habitually is, so here's what I'm thinking of yeah, in my head. That's less cute. Yeah. Who, when <laughs> I go to bed, I will, I'll try and fall asleep on my own, but I'll be like, just, I'll tell my husband, like, just put on the TV. I just need something so that I'm not thinking, but Mm. it doesn't feel good. It feels like a desperate choice. It feels like, get me out of my head. I can't be here. Well, but, and that's the story around it is the part that, that, that to me sounds really painful. I, what I'm hearing under there and please, as always, I'm often wrong. Tell me that I can't with my own brain. It's, I don't trust myself to be able to hold space for my own mental wellness, Mm -hmm. for my own mental machinations, for the work my brain needs to do. Yeah, that feels right. Okay. And so that, so a practice is a thing we do at a time, right? I teach my clients how to do somatic practices. Now we'll do figure eights with our arms to bring ourselves into ventral vagal. Cool. Great. Important. Really important. And then praxis is how we live it. Yeah. And so when we live a meditative, mindful life, we are able to flow in and out of that state at will. We're able to flow in and out of presence. You with me so far? Mm -hmm. And so the praxis of being a person who is able to calm and soothe their own mind in order to come into sleep may be a goal. So that the story isn't, I am unable, I am incapable. The story is, I am practicing towards a lived Mm -hmm. praxis. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And so what we learn to do is to honor the buffer as a gift. So you're being able to turn on the TV and just let your brain just work through it and like have that sort of escape valve is not a bad thing, right? It's a survival skill your brain has figured out so that you can actually get sleep because humans who don't sleep die, right? It's a torture technique, Mm -hmm. right? (sighs) And so it's good. Let's praise your brain for figuring this out, right? Parks and Rec keeps you from dying, (laughs) right? The office keeps you from dying. Cool, cool, right? And another way is possible. Mm -hmm. So what could it look like to meditate for five slow, deep breaths and then turn the TV on and do that for a week? And then the next week, 10 deep breaths and then the TV. Mm -hmm. And then a little yoga nidra, three minutes and then the TV. Right, We don't rip the rug out from under our nervous system. Not in my world. We work gently, slowly. We pendulate. We go towards what's challenging, what's new, and then back to what's easy, and then what's challenging, and then what's easy. Mm-hmm. Right? We, we build trust with the nervous system. Whether it's around sleep or about being present in sex. Right? So maybe the next time someone's going down on me, I'm going to stay present for three breaths and then I'm going to let my brain narrate. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Mm -hmm. And we let ourselves slowly ease into it because, because science, right? And because being kind matters. Be kind to yourself and your nervous system. Your, your brain and body checked out for a smart reason. Don't, don't force it. Don't push it. Mm-hmm. I am a rug ripper, which sounds sexual, um, <laughs> but not I mean... in a good way. <laughs> I... It's better than being like a rug muncher. If you would have said it that way, that would have been more sexual. Well, more, it would have been more sexual. Yeah. I guess it just depends on rug what ripper. you're into. Rug ripper it's sounds true. like you're a waxer. <laughs> That's true. I'm a rug ripper. Rug um, ripper. But I absolutely pull the rug out from mm-hmm. under myself when I'm trying to, like, quote, unquote, fix myself. Um, ah, but there's the problem. Yeah. 
right? When that's the story, I have to Mm -hmm. fix myself. I'm broken. There's something wrong with Mm -hmm. me. Of course, you're not going to be kind to you. Who would? Ew, that broken robot in the corner. (laughs) Kick it till it behaves. (laughs) Right? Yeah. That is like, absolutely the philosophy that I'm using with myself. <laughs> right? Like when yeah. the Nintendo wouldn't work, you would thwomp it a couple times. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Hit the cartridge on the side of the couch. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and I'm I'm sorry to cut you off, but I, but not. Because yeah. that's the, pro- there, therein mm-hmm. lies the problem. Is the mm-hmm. very premise that there's anything wrong with you. Right. Which is why I keep framing all of the work I do is framed in the fact that you are perfect. All the shit you do that you fucking hate and feels like it's ruining your life is because you are perfect and amazing. And it's a survival skill from childhood. It just doesn't serve you anymore. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. Change it. Take personal responsibility. Heal your nervous system. Regulate your shit. Do it. But not from the story that I'm wrong or bad or broken. Because it doesn't work. And right. it's not kind. Yeah. It has Let's not just worked. always be kind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I have a quick question that relates. The answer is syphilis. <laughs> yeah. What's the next question? And the yeah. answer is Calm syphilis. <laughs> Move syphilis. on. Next. <laughs> next question. We've already talked about this. Come on now. You have scurvy. Move on. <laughs> oh, my God. I thank you for kicking it old school pirate. Piracy themed. This week's the Honey Doomy do podcast brought to you by Piracy and Oranges. And have orange. you tried lemonade for your scurvy? <laughs> we always joke that our biggest sponsor is the trash island <laughs> in the Pacific or just floating anywhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, why? Because it's uh, funny. It's just funny. One day oh, we not were in like, a self-deprecating yeah. way at all. Just okay, in a, okay. we were just um, spitballing cool, 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 things cool. that could sponsor us one day. Yeah, yeah. and it got sillier <laughs> and sillier until we landed on the trash <laughs> island that floats. And we liked that one. <laughs> I love that. But I, I yeah. I mean, and the other scurvy. option really is penicillin. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but 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 it's funnier when you have the trash island. Yeah. That's do true. you really need it? Do you need anything else? Yes. There's bound to what be some citrus. What you need the yeah. most after you hang out on the trash island is a lot of penicillin. That's true. Like like a, like a lot. We'll that see if true. they'll partner together. Yeah. Yeah. Us. Yeah. See if Little Z-Pak crossover is available yeah. for that. Z Pack might wanna. So cute. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. Oh, so good times. Funny. Wait, did you good have a time. question? Oh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um okay. so this this hit me when we were talking about buffering and like over flood like just flooding your your system so that mm. you can disassociate a little bit. Yep. And I realize I do that when I have this breathing thing and me and someone else in my family, we get this exact same thing when we get stressed and overwhelmed. And it's literally like you can't take a deep breath for anywhere between an hour to a couple days if like the stress is just that overwhelming. And I guess I just wonder if you have any insight onto how stress and like flooding your system can impact that. Oh my goodness. So the diaphragm should be a muscle of respiration. Right. So just for folks who are like, what is my diaphragm? Is that a birth control te- mechanism? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. But that is and. not of what of which we speak. So your diaphragm is the uh, membrane, the, the muscle that separates the, the heart lung part of the body from the guts part of the body. Right. Um, so it's right under your riblets. And it is a really important muscle of respiration, of breathing, unless you are so adrenalized, you are in so much stress that it becomes a muscle of stabilization, which is not its job. It's not built to stabilize your posture. That's that's not what it's here for. It will do that as an emergency valve, but that's like uh, somewhere between zero and 0.0% its job. And so that can make it feel really challenging to take a deep breath because the, the diaphragm, which should expand and contract, right, in ventral vagal is able to just be elastic and expand and contract, comes into a contractile state as it's asked to stabilize the spine by the postural changes of stress. Whoa, science. That's crazy. Right? 
Yeah. The other thing is, once again, you're 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 just hanging out on the savanna of evolution. You're sitting by the fire. Maybe you're having like a nice, I don't know, little chunk of gazelle, maybe a s'mores. <laughs> and all of a sudden you hear the roar of lion. What are you going to do? You're going to get up and you're going to, you're going to evaluate the threat. Oh, that's a lion. That weighs whatever lion weighs and we weigh is way lesses. <laughs> Cannot fight. What? Cannot fight. <laughs> what can do? light fuck let's go so you mobilize the extremities right all the blood goes to heart and lungs and all the adrenaline speed up let's go pause and pause right footses and handses for the running and the potentially you know punching of lions smacking <laughs> smacking a lion smacking a lion left and right um and so you're not going to take deep, slow breaths, are you? You got to book it. <laughs> Get away from the lions. Lions is coming. <laughs> Bring as much oxygen in, as much CO2 out. As much oxygen in, as much CO2 out. In, out. Buffer the blood, right? Oxygen in, CO2 out. You're not going. <sighs> Expansive, slow breathing. <laughs> There's a lion on my ass. I might be a <laughs> snack. Right? You're not in your yoga teacher voice. Mm -hmm. You're in your like holy sh fucking shit voice. And so taking a deep breath, being present, having complex thought, digesting cheeseburgers, having a menstrual cycle that, you know, a regular menstrual cycle, good thyroid function, uh, endocrine function, orgasm. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no that is uh, on the to do not do list yeah uh. right your body's like oh fuck that. no girl no <laughs> no thou shalt not absolutely <laughs> not book it mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. makes logic right yeah mm -hmm. so stress leading to a number one the diaphragm being a a, a postural support structural muscle which is not its job can make that deep breath feel challenging and like you're not supposed to when you're stressed. Mm -hmm. It's just not, it's not what we do in sympathetic. That is a parasympathetic choice. Mm -hmm. There's also probably something in there about surfactant, but now I'm going like deep nerd and I don't think we need to go there. I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to, if anyone wants to nerd about surfactant, go for it. Holler at Got me it. with what you find. Uh, Holler at the Surfactants. Albina Wellness. Yeah. <laughs> or you're going to DM. Yeah. But, yeah. That makes a yeah. ton of sense. Doesn't it? It makes, it logics yeah. pretty yeah. good. Yeah, it logics yeah. pretty good. Yeah, pretty goodly. So. So if you yes. are stressing yeah. all the time, all yes. of those different functions would probably be impacted, right? Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Like when deeply. I was a little like hot deep mess. in your uterus, maybe <laughs> like maybe would it like result in like some pretty intense cramps? I don't know. I'm asking. I mean, for Emma. asking for a friend. <laughs> for Emma. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm asking for Emma. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, everybody cast, just I mean, say that. Yeah, I'm asking, I'm asking for, for Emma. Emma. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. part and parcel, right? So I think mm -hmm. one of the problems that happens in the like white wellness industrial complex is like your mindset is everything. Yeah. And now it's like mm. your nervous system is everything. Mm -hmm. Your polyvagal is everything. No, nothing is everything. Everything is everything. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, your nervous system. Yes. Polyvagal innervation, hormone balance. Let's let's throw Monsanto the entire way the fuck under the bus. Right. And talk about disruption of our endocrine systems, our nervous systems, our, our hormonal balance, right? The musks, the Febreze, the like, all the fake chemical fragrances that mess up our hormones, GMOs, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's a lot of stuff. It's not the one thing. And so we can pick one place to start. And I think that for me, because of the kind of nerd I am, the nervous system is my where to start, but we also need to look at all of the things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like all the things, but like, shh. Mm -hmm. 
don't stress out about it. It's okay. It's just everything. It's which just, frankly is, is it's just everything, which like I can, my partner's like a for real Buddhist. I'm like Buddhist light, um, but she's like a <laughs> refuge vows taken for real Tibetan Buddhist. And like, I can hear her saying, well, everything, but also nothingness. So it's great, just great, 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 Don't great, worry great. about it. It's really fine. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. really fine. You're fine. Totally fine. Don't worry about it. But like okay. for real though, you can't tackle all the things at once. Mm-hmm. Like how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So learn about your nervous system, learn to map your nervous system, take one breath a day where you come back into presence, right? Learn how to orient your, your nervous system. And I have free downloads on my website, uh, victorialbn.com slash honey do me. They're free price is right. You can't beat it. Learn how to mm-hmm. orient your nervous system and let that be the only thing you change for a hot minute. And then start looking at your deodorant. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Buy your deodorant where you can. Yeah. Right? Hi, deodorant. Do you have chemical? F- if you see the word fragrance, run from a product. Right? So you can know. talk I about your nervous system. Look at me. I have been trying to get Emma Uh-oh. to switch her deodorant for I'm seven years. I'm just so sweaty. <laughs> that it's hard to go but, for the things that don't have fragrance. So you can use stuff with essential oils. It's just when you see the word fragrance, I just assume if they're not divulging what the fragrance is, that's because it's poison. It's like an endocrine disruptor. Stop. Right. So my deodorant smells gorgeous. It's like Palo Santo, frankincense and some other hippie business. And like, I mean, I stink through it in like an hour. Let's be very real. But at least it's not poison. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. But to to each their own. (laughs) Yeah. No one's looking at you. We're all we're all averting our eyes. Just looking. I'm looking around you. Just through yep. you. I'm looking Enjoy through you. Your early death. <laughs> God fucking lord. Oh, where do you want to jump to? Um, I'm wondering if we can sidestep slash backstep a little bit. Yep. Because yes, we, yes. Um, yes. I want to talk usual. a little bit about how sexual trauma can get into all of this. Um if that's all right with you. Totally. Totally uh, great. Thanks for asking for consent. Yes. Um, I also want to make sure that the good listeners leave this and they're not just like, well, everything's doomed. Mm-hmm. I want to give some really practical tips for when you yes. are having sex and Bob Vila comes into the room or you uh-huh. leave yes. the room to go meet Bob Vila. Um, and also this old house, please don't sue us. We love <laughs> you. <laughs> Does PBS bother suing any, but I mean, like, is that... I don't think so. I think they know they're a coping mechanism. Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. (laughs) They're well aware. Well aware. They're used. Oh my God, I love it. I love it. I mean, frankly, this is free advertising. If you are looking to cope through distraction, have you considered this house? You're welcome. (laughs) I think they owe us royalties is what's happening right now. I think that is what's happening. We're looking for a check. Yeah, (laughs) check. So how does sexual trauma impact all of this? The, The mostly... Mm-hmm. Right. So if your body is the site of trauma, especially sexual trauma, and you're trying to have sex. So, OK, so the word triggered is way overused. And I think it's really problematic. And let's do a whole other show. About it. Okay. But when your nervous system gets triggered, what that means is you leave ventral vagal and you go into sympathetic or dorsal. And it is challenging to come out. Right. You, you get you feel stuck in that state. Right. Your nervous system isn't literally stuck. That's impossible. You'd die. But it feels it's sort of colloquially stuck in that state. Uh, And what your mind and body do because they love you is when you leave ventral vagal, you leave the here and now you leave presence and you go to a different place in the timeline of your life, like the movie, the film of your life. But in this moment, so all of a sudden (coughs) you're six. All of a sudden, you're 12, you're 24, you're 37. Whenever that sexual stress, distress, or trauma happened, your mind and body goes back to there and attempts to replay the tape in the hopes that it'll now turn out differently. It is also in the hopes of warning you to like be vigilant, right? Something is happening that feels like a thing that was a bad thing that happened. So eyes up, pay attention. Leave this, leave this moment because this might be the time that it kills us. 
because the body, the nervous system is, is really interested in the one thing, which is survival. So it's constantly like, oh, that's unsafe. That could be the murder, right? This could be the time. Mm-hmm. So again, it is an act of love from your body to you to take you back into the past. It just sucks. Like it, mm-hmm. it sucks. I mean, I've gotten triggered during sex and I'm just like not in the room. I'm in the past and it is really challenging to make the video stop make the sensation stop of past trauma until you have the nervous system capacity right the space in your nervous system uh for me it was about mindfulness presence it was about building nervous system regulation outside of the bedroom there is about building regulation when i was getting on the subway when i was in the grocery store when i was having uh like a friendly argument Right. And then like a real conflict. Uh, It was about building capacity everywhere, mindfulness everywhere. For me, meditation, because meditation works for me as an animal. uh, And really leaning into building those tools and those skills so that when something happened in sex, which didn't actually even need to be reminiscent of my sexual trauma. Mm -hmm. Right. Like not reminiscent at all. But the brain was like, oh. Oh, be, uh, yeah. watch out, kiddo. <laughs> right? It's Uncle Sam <laughs> in your head. <laughs> totally. <laughs> right? It would uh-huh. send me into sympathetic, into, and then for me, pretty quickly into dorsal, into checkout, into dissociation, to not being present, mm-hmm. which then s- sounded like not um, being consentful because you can't be from, from dissociation, not. Um, being directive, not having good boundaries, you know, not, not being present, but not saying anything because I was dissociated. And so I mm-hmm. couldn't, right. Um, or just freaking the fuck out, quite frankly, mm-hmm. you know, it would go from one extreme to the other. Cause that's, <laughs> that's how nervous systems work. Mm-hmm. And so it really was about starting to build up enough presence. And I, I realizing I'm getting into the I'm getting into the to the solution to the remedy. Is that working for y'all? Yes, please yeah. mm-hmm. check in and be consentful. Uh, <laughs> it was for me, yes, about practicing all these things not in the bedroom, not during sex, so that they were go-to skills during sex. One, two, starting to build somatic embodiment, right? Getting present in my body in non-stressful moments again, so that I could start to learn my own tells. So what is the early tell that I'm going towards sympathetic? Right? Because it's, it's, yes, it happens quickly, but there's tells, right? There's an aura. Like before someone gets a migraine and they get an aura, Mm -hmm. it's, it can be like that where it's like, Oh, I just got that weird flutter in my belly. Oh shit. I know that weird flutter. That flutter is like four steps ahead of totally just freaking out and then dissociating. Oh, snap. Let me pause here and like ask my body what it wants and needs. Right. And come into a different kind of presence with my body where I'm in communication. So what it again, it's about befriending the the signs and signals from our nervous system instead of writing them off, pushing them aside, pushing through them, getting annoyed at them, getting irritated with them, getting frustrated by them. Oh, why is my body doing that again? It's doing it because it loves you, God damn it. <laughs> right? It loves the shit out of you. So that deep breath of not being chased by a lion. And yes, it's not the breath in, it's the breath out. That brings us into parasympathetic. Deep breath in with like just a, that that will actually send you into sympathetic faster. Okay. Sorry. So it's the <laughs> and then asking yourself when you're not in the stressful, meaning sexual situation here, what is my go to grounding? Like, what is the thing? So in the nervous system world, we talk about it as a glimmer. So a glimmer is the opposite of a trigger. And it's something that brings us into ventral vagal. Yeah. 
And so, for example, do you want to decide to feel your own hair and remind yourself you're present, right? Will that, will that help your body to come back into the here and now? Do you want to rub your hands on your face? Do you want to feel the bed, right? How can you get present in, your, in this time and place in which you are having sex and, and thereby bring your nervous system, your mind, your body back from the abyss of the past, Caveat I should have said about seven and a half minutes ago, if this is happening <laughs> frequently, please find a trauma therapist, mm-hmm. not a coach who's not a therapist. If, if your coach is also a therapist, that counts, but like a therapist mm-hmm. who has studied EMDR, internal family systems, um, somatic experiencing, sensory motor psychotherapy, who's like trauma is their jam and sexual trauma is their expertise to support you in creating a plan for you, right? We do trauma stabilization work in therapy and then we can come to coaching later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Survival in therapy, thriving in coaching. Mm -hmm. Don't get it twisted. (laughs) Get get, get stable. Like Mm -hmm. you you don't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And then use use these tools, right? right? Mm -hmm. But first things first. If you have been ignoring, shoving away those bodily signs, is it going to take a while to fully be able to recognize them? Depends. I mean, it depends on what else you're up to, right? Mm -hmm. If you're busy. (laughs) I mean, if you're busy, then yeah. 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 I mean, have you filed your taxes? How is your dishwasher? No, but um, yeah, it could. You know my list. (laughs) Right. Exactly. It's top of your list. Thank you. Yeah, it could take a while. It could also not take a while. You know what I mean? So it's really about uh, openness, open heartedness and patience, which like, oof, talk about something that are over caffeinated, over stimulated, over social media, over dopamine. Boom, culture does not have these days. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Which is a thing we cultivate by sitting on the freaking cushion for 15 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day. We sat for 30 this morning. There were some challenging moments in there where my brain was like, (laughs) (laughs) but we we cultivate patience so we can begin to shift in a way that honors our humanity. Mm -hmm. And a prerequisite for that is slowness. The nervous system is slow on purpose. Mm -hmm. And that is a beautiful thing when you are able to meet it and it's really fucking annoying when you're not (laughs) yeah let's just be really real we're never anything else right so yes Mm -hmm. you can expect this to take a hot minute and then one day it might just click and you're like oh that's how it happened for me i was like oh that's the like pre 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 of of a trigger and if you're new to me, when I use the word trigger, I only mean it in the clinical sense, not the like, oh my God, I ordered a latte and they totally gave me a chai and it was so triggering. <laughs> Never using it in that bullshit <laughs> way. I mean, clinically, like I have just, mm-hmm. I am not present in my physical body and I am replaying a trauma tape in my brain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking of like, you said one, meditations, and then two was like really getting in your body. So you linked us to your meditations, free, wonderful meditations. Yeah. I would start with orienting, which is, which is not going inside the body, orienting to environment. Okay. Right. Because Uh yeah. So what, what can happen if the, if the body is a site of trauma is, is we go in and that's what, what starts the loop. That's what can start the the trigger trauma, the trauma trigger either way. Um, And so orienting to the environment takes us out of self, but into presence It's a really interesting trick, right? It's an interesting Mm -hmm. tool. So we are present. It's just not inside the body. Okay. So what can that look like? Like how orienting is dope. All right, let's do it right now. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone listening, I want to invite you to take your head and turn it, you know, if you have as much as your physical capacity is available to for and go all the way to the left and start scanning your environment. And so you're the simplest way is just to notice as you bring your head, your you're moving your head on a swivel towards the center and then all the way to the right and slow, 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 slow. And you're just literally being present to what is. Just notice it. Mm-hmm. 
So that's one way to orient. Another way to orient is to decide ahead of time. Please don't try to make these decisions when you're in stress or a trigger. (laughs) I am going to find all of the blue things in this environment. I'm going to name them. So poster, book, backpack, pen, drawing, mask. I'm going to find all the round things. And you look around your space and you find the round things. You could also use the senses. What and it, and if you're in an actual trigger, just don't try to count. Like people will make it really complicated. What are five things you can smell? Four things you can see? Just mm-hmm. for fuck's sake, <laughs> smelling. <laughs> what is smelling? Um, there's uh, tea in here. Great. I have a smelling tasting. I don't know. I can't taste anything. Let me have a sip of my tea. Tasting tea. Touch uh, uh, the sweater. Touch the sweater. Right. Keep it simple. Keep it simple and practice orienting when you're totally fine, when everything's friggin' copacetic. Me, I am a small animal who drinks a lot of, I like to have like 27 beverages at once. So I tie all new habits to peeing because peeing is a thing I do very often. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? So, yeah. So if I am working to support myself, not dissociating, staying present during sex, particularly when I have a history of sexual stress, distress, or trauma, then every time I go pee or wash my hands or like whatever repetitive thing you do all the time is, you use that as the, the, um, the, the catalyst, the thing that sparks the reaction to orient. Mm. Oh, look, I'm washing my hands. I'm feeling the water on my, on my skin. How does this temperature feel? Rather nice. Thank you. How does this soap smell? Ooh, that's the delight. Or I actually don't like this soap. Why do I have this? Um, what what do my feet feel like on the ground here in this bathroom? Right? Are these shoes supportive? Mm-hmm. Meow, 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 meow. <laughs> but like orient, right? Et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But orienting yourself to the environment. Coming into presence in the environment as a step towards coming into presence within your body. So then you could grow from there. Let's stay with, with washing your hands. So what does it feel like to be my hands and to be washed? What is that, right? What does it feel like to be my hands and to choose to be washed? Right, slightly different, a shift in agency there, yeah? Mm-hmm. So like then slowly beginning to come into the body. What does it feel like to be my feet on the ground, to bring my presence into my feet? Yeah. And so realize what I'm doing here is we started with two points of presence that are not sexual organs. Mm -hmm. Right. They're not primarily places that are coded as sexual. And if hands and feet are part of your trauma, then start with your ears you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. don't, if you're here like, oh, well, I just got excluded. No, my angel mama gave an example. <laughs> right? Like, start with your elbows. How are your elbows right now? You know what? Like, as you're putting your sweater on, how do your elbows feel? Your kneecaps. Come to a place that is trauma neutral and start by getting present there. And then adding another place. Like, is your forehead trauma neutral? Yes? Okay. Touch your forehead. What does it feel like to feel your own hand there? What is, for me, I have bangs. Like, I could come into constant presence with my forehead, right? Mm -hmm. When you're putting on lotion, what does it feel like to be your forehead or the tip of your nose? And start to build presence within your physiology, within your body. Start to build embodiment through this gentle, incremental, titrated pathway. No need to pull no kind of rugs. No rugs. rugs. No, no rug, rug pulling. Grabbing. Carpet <laughs> munching, yes. Rug pulling, <laughs> no. No. That's going to be a no. That's going to be that's going to be a no. And that's the motto. That's yeah. the motto. I love that. Yep. I love that. Let's get that on t-shirts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why don't we have a t-shirt of our three faces though? I know. I don't know. We need Wait. that. We absolutely need it. We absolutely need it. It could Who be our sleep on the job here. Our three faces on the trash island with our <gasps> slogan underneath it. And penicillin. And penicillin. And penicillin. <laughs> I love it. But like a big syringe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pen we'll get VK. working. 
Yeah. Make sure you have scurvy in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, obviously. <laughs> Thank you. Obviously, yeah. so you will be toothless. <laughs> I will be. <laughs> toothless. Because of your scurvy. Because of my scurvy. Because of Obviously. your scurvy. Um, my dad's mom was an amazing woman, and she ran a summer camp for the children of lepers. Wow. wow. So they were born immune to leprosy, but, like, no one wanted to hang out with them because, like, their parents were lepers, and so they were as stigmatized as their parents. And she was a teacher um, and was, you know, like, her, her mission was literacy, uh, especially for marginalized communities. And like, can you get more marginalized than actual legitimate lepers in third world Argentina in the fifties? Like, come on. Holy come on. shit. That's pretty dope. That so is. yeah, so she ran a colonia for the, the children of lepers. So she would teach them to read. She would teach them basic life skills and they would like have fun. And I'm from a beach town, Mar del Plata, uh, on the coast of Argentina, obviously, because it's the beach, it's on the coast. And she, yeah, they would have fun, which was something they didn't usually get. Isn't that so dope? Yeah. That is heartwarming. That's amazing. Right? I feel Shit. warm in my heart. I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad. Really sweet. Oh, yeah. brother. Well, thank you. Hey. Thank you. Anytime. Thank you. Anytime. Well, actually, Where monthly. Can our... Yes. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Where can our listeners continue connecting <clears> with you? <throat> after this and beyond i give good gram at victoria albino wellness my podcast is called feminist wellness it's for humans of all genders and is available wherever your podcasts are sold uh you can check out my six month program in which i bring in all this nervous system nerdetry thought work somatic or body-based practices woo good times all the science all the sacred all the woo all the time victoriaalbina.com slash anchored uh that's oh and of course victoriaalbina.com slash honey do me which yes. is where you can get those free orienting um orienting exercises meditations in our child practice it's a damn good time over there and that's also fr double e you, you can't lose if you hate it delete it who cares yeah, I love it when people spell things like that. My dog's name is Todd, and so we call him T O Double D. Yeah, <laughs> that's really cute. And it's like Chuck. Tigger. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's just like T I Double G R. Why is your dog called Todd? Um, so my is other he the dog... whitest dog? That's what I also need to know. <laughs> he is white and black. He's a Newfoundland. Oh, um, we. I didn't want to name him Todd at first. Okay. My other dog's name is Copper. Mm -hmm. And he was named Copper when I got him. And then ah. Fox and the Hound oh. and Copper and Todd. And my husband really liked the name Todd, thought it was funny. And then when we met him, we knew he, he was, was a Todd. Todd. Yeah. Um, so he's Todd Rose. That's his <laughs> that's middle name. Really cute. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and it cute. just fits him. It's I don't know acceptable. why. I mean, yeah. It's I'm weird it. as fuck. Yeah. I have a dog named Todd, especially when I meet a human named Todd. It's like, right. Todd, hmm. this is questionable. Hmm. Todd. <laughs> right, this is questionable. Yeah, but. I have questions about Todd, but mm -hmm. I like Todd the dog. Thank, thank you for you. Uh, thank you for those details. You're welcome. <laughs> Whew. Well, we danced our way to the end of that one. Yeah, we did. Crawled a little, cried a little, <laughs> had to, you know, get in the fetal position a little bit mm -hmm. and just comfort myself. There's just some stuff yeah. that Victoria always seems to like fucking hit on really gets to me like I expect to go deep and then she just like removes the layer I expected to get to and it's just like oh and the floor drops out from under you yeah so much more <laughs> under there <laughs> yeah. the whole cleaning thing that she had mentioned about like not being able to let yourself accept love I don't know if that's totally the same definition for me but like the fact that I do avoid attention and comfort mm-hmm and seek to clean my drains instead. It's very interesting. I'll have to look into that. Yeah, I'll have to look that one up. I'll have to like Google it, see if I can get yeah. some more info. I'm gonna query that. <laughs> I'll um, search that in TikTok and see what comes up. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, not far off. Honestly, Bad. I have started checking Google, uh, TikTok before I check Google for some things. Cause I'm like, oh, yeah. I want a video of it and I want it yeah. short. 
And I want it to I feel connected to my generation. <laughs> yes. I want it in my terms. Yeah. Generationally like, appropriate. All right, girlies. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like, I want them to explain how to build something in that tone. Exactly. Yeah. Sorry. So, um, so thank you, Victoria, for once again, lovingly mm-hmm. ripping the floor out mm-hmm. from beneath us. And thank you to our listeners for hanging out. Go ahead and share this episode with someone that you care about. This is such a good episode to share. I mean, if you really want to rip someone's heart out, but then hand it right back to them with a bow. A little bit better. Any (laughs) Victoria's episodes are the way to go. Uh, Mm -hmm. You can also head on over to Apple Podcasts to rate, review, and subscribe to Honey Do Me. You can also rate us on Spotify. Leave a written review. I don't know what emoji you can leave for this. A rug? Is there a carpet emoji? (laughs) Oh, yeah. You do say carpet not munching, carpet ripping a carpet lot. Carpet ripping, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's a carpet emoji. There might be a little contractor, though. Whatever you can do the <laughs> closest to a carpet. Yeah. <laughs> That's up to Ugh. interpretation. Yeah. <laughs> That's up to you. However you want to interpret that, go off. <laughs> go off. Amazing. Well, I guess we'll just see you guys next week. Yeah. What just popped into my head was a little a closer. Go off, come hard. See you next week. Bye. <laughs>